In my career, I have a lot of regrets, but there are a few things that I don't regret. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you what they are. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff. Today, I wanna to share with you some things that I don't regret doing in my career, and hopefully it will inspire you to take advantage of the same things. Because let's face it, life is too short to live with less than ideal circumstances. And besides, a true CEO of their career doesn't live with regret. But before we get too far into it, and in the spirit of acting like the CEO of your career, if you're interested in learning how to reclaim power in your career, consider signing up for my free weekly newsletter. And in it, I share weekly actionable tips on how to start to approach your career with more authority and conviction. And keep in mind, it's absolutely free, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So I've done a lot of boneheaded things in my career and in my life, and I've talked about a lot of them on this channel. In fact, I had a recent video about some of the biggest career mistakes that I've made. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link somewhere up here for it. But in this video, I'm going to share the flip side, some things that I don't regret doing in my life and in my career. The first thing I don't regret doing is developing new skills and more importantly, investing in myself. Because I feel if anything is worthy investing in, it's myself and my career potential. And hopefully you feel the same way. And I look at it this way. A lot of people go out in the world, they learn a bunch of skills that are important for the employer, but not necessarily important for them in their long-term career growth. And ultimately they're adding to the bottom line of the business, which is great, could help you in your career as well. But very few people actually invest in skills that will truly make a difference in their long-term career potential, probably more importantly, their earning potential. And for me, there was a lot of skills that I had to learn with this business. For example, I had to learn how to market myself. I had to learn how to create and code websites. And I even had to learn how to create a YouTube channel. And I'm a proponent of trying to find the shortcuts when I can. I actually signed up for several training courses which have sped up my learning curve and have absolutely affected the bottom line of my business and of my life in such a profound way that it's just a no-brainer for me whether or not I would do it again. So absolutely, I consider myself to be the most worthy person of my own investment in time, energy, and resources. And I suggest you do the same. The next thing I've never regretted doing is spending more time with my wife and my kids. And this is something that's affected me quite a bit because my son will often come into my office while I'm in the middle of working and he'll come and visit. He'll bring in his little toys in his trucks and he'll sit on the floor next to me. And sometimes he'll want to come sit on my lap while I'm working. And in fact, a few times he's actually responded to a few comments accidentally on LinkedIn and probably some people got some gibberish that they were wondering what it was. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot of times I've gotten annoyed with it where I've got all this stuff to do and dad Daddy's got work and you got to leave me alone. And then I realized something. He really looks up to me and he's only going to be this age once. And I need to remember to put down the work and spend more time with my family. And every time I've done that, I have absolutely not regretted it. In fact, that's a priority that I have made for myself and my family is to be more present with them to put down the phone, to put down the computer, to put down the comments section, to put work to the side so that I can spend more time and be more present with my family. So spend as much time with your spouse, your kids as you possibly can because you'll never get that time back. And the only person that's going to remember how much you worked is your family and in particular your kids. My son made a comment that really hit deep with me when we were all getting ready to go out and have a family day. And he looked at me and said, is daddy staying home to go work? And that was my decision that I need to be more present with my family. And the next thing is setting stretch goals. I have never regretted setting a goal that was further than I thought I could reach because what I've found is I've surprised myself a bunch of times. I made a goal. I've actually have a vision board in front of me. I'm looking at it right now. It's on my wall and I write out all of my objectives, all of my accomplishments, all of my to do so I can visually see it. And I do have a stretch goal and it changes routinely. And I think big picture, I want to have a yearly stretch goal, a five year stretch goal. And then I get into a little bit more immediate what I want to accomplish for the month. So if you're somebody that's not in the habit of setting goals, I highly recommend that you do it. And the forward inertia really makes the difference between being stale and really starting to accomplish some of your bigger goals, bigger aspirations, bigger dreams. The next thing I've never regretted doing is sticking with my business, even when I wanted to quit. Because listen, there's been a lot of times in the last few years that I've been completely burned out. I've been discouraged. I've posted videos and they don't do anything or people will leave a nasty comment after I feel like I've given a ton of value and it does affect you. You know, those types of comments, you know, when people are always putting their hand out for more and more and more, and there's times where I've said, can I continue to do this? It's especially true when you're putting a lot of effort into something that just isn't working. And people will say, well, you've got a great YouTube channel. And that's 
true. I'm very fortunate to have a YouTube channel that's been very successful. I have a very successful TikTok channel as well, but there's some other platforms that I've put some effort into and I'm just not getting any traction. So even though I've accomplished certain things and I'm very proud of, I look at some other things like my Twitter account. It's pretty embarrassing right now. I think I've got like 35 followers and I'm trying to publish content there routinely. And there's times where I'm like, do I really want to do this? Because maybe I'm spreading myself too thin. Maybe I don't have the energy or maybe I just don't even have the competency to try to grow another platform. But every time I have stuck with my business, even when I wanted to call it quits, I have never regretted it. And it's been the best decision that I could make. So I would encourage you to do the same thing in your life. If it's a career related goal, maybe you're trying to switch careers and trying to do something completely different. There will probably come a time where you will feel like you want to throw in the towel. You want to give up. It's too hard. The mountain is too big to climb. And what I've learned is small incremental goals and appreciating the small wins that you've made makes all the difference in the world. So stick with your goal. I personally have I've never regretted and I'm glad I didn't give up on my business when it looked like I probably would at one point. The next thing I never regretted doing is building meaningful relationships through networking. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, this is still a work in progress where I'm trying to build active networks and relationships with my peer group and other people in the industry that I admire because who you know and how you interact with them could be the biggest difference between whether or not you're successful or you're somebody that flounders. And people who neglect their networking in particular tend to have a much more difficult path to their end goal if they ever reach it. So I would encourage you to build those networks, whatever they look like for you in your own personal sphere. I'm not necessarily talking about my neighbors or the person that I ran into at the post office or even potential old schoolmates or whatever. I'm talking about meaningful relationships that can actually benefit my career. And I fully recognize that there's some mystery there and people don't truly understand the power of networking and how to do it. But I promise you, networking is one of the most impactful things that you can do in your career. And if you want to get ahead, that's absolutely a place that I'd be spending time. And I've never regretted working on my networks and building them to the point where they start to bear fruit. The next thing I've never regretted doing was leaving a bad relationship that affected my confidence. And this could go for both personal relationships with maybe friends or potential romantic relationships, but even more importantly with career or job opportunities that just didn't fit my personality and weren't healthy for me. I'm more than one position in my career where I've left because it wasn't the right fit for me. It wasn't giving me what I needed professionally. And I had to make a difficult decision and act like the CEO of my career. But if you're in a situation where your confidence is being affected, you have a boss who is making you feel this big, your peer group is making you feel incompetent, or the work is overwhelming you, or you're in a relationship with somebody who is not giving you what you need and making you feel like you're not worth anything. Anytime I've left those relationships, I have never regretted it. So I suggest that you do the same. The next one is something I've had to work a little harder than I anticipated at is I've never regretted taking a vacation. And much like the example of where I spent time with my family, Forcing myself to get away from the work and putting the work down and not checking the phone and being at peace with the idea that the world will still be going on, everything will still be fine, and I need that recharge. Professional burnout is a real thing, and if you don't take care of yourself, it will affect every aspect of your life. So please, use your vacation for its intended purpose, and don't be a squirrel socking away all of your vacation so that you can roll it over to the next year. The next thing I've never regretted doing is building my personal brand. And building a personal brand is not just for some big influencer or some personality. It's literally for everybody, and especially if you're a career-minded person, Everybody should be focusing on building personal brands on a consistent basis because that's a key to unlocking your career potential. And if you're not sure how to build your personal brand, go back to the first example of learning a new skill and investing in yourself. This is absolutely a skill that I would invest in. I've also never regretted leaving a job that didn't value me properly. So if I was underpaid, overworked, dealing with a boss that was just not valuing the contribution that I was providing to the team. I can officially say I've never looked back with regret on an employer that did not treat me properly. 
And I'd suggest you do the same. If you're trying to stick out a bad job opportunity because you feel some sense of loyalty or whatever the case might be, you're almost certainly just wasting your time and you're only blocking the opportunity to find the right fit instead. So you might wanna consider leaving for an opportunity that's actually going to value you. Taking this a step further, I've never regretted establishing personal and professional boundaries. I remember working in a startup one time where we were launching a new facility and I had a boss that tried to make me feel bad for asking to leave after a 12 hour day. And as I was driving home, I was thinking to myself, am I being a jerk for leaving after 12 hours? Cause I'm tired, I'm burned out and I don't really want to be there anymore. And I decided that no, it's perfectly reasonable to want to be home, spend time with your family and not be at work for 13, 14 hours. And from then on, I had a mindset shift that I was no longer going to feel bad for working the normal hours which leads me directly to the next one is when my boss continued to ask me to work these ridiculous hours and I finally had to tell her no. I'm able to do it occasionally, but if this is the norm, then we either need to hire an additional person or we need to reevaluate my compensation. Because at the end of the day, if you don't establish personal boundaries and you don't learn how to say no, then they will walk all over you. And this is part of establishing the authority in your career, but you have to be in a position of power to say no, because if you're somebody that feels that this toxic job is your only opportunity and that you're not worthy of anything better, then you don't truly have power in your career, which leads me to the last thing that I've never regretted doing, which is stepping into my own power and establishing that I am the CEO of my career because this mindset shift has meant all the difference in my life. And I can't tell you how much it has impacted everything that I experience in a very positive manner. I wouldn't be here today talking to you about this if I hadn't done this myself. And listen, there's absolutely nothing wrong, nothing dirty about establishing authority, learning how to say no, pushing back on toxic situations and toxic bosses, and putting yourself first for a change. And that's what learning how to be the CEO of your career does. So if you're somebody that feels like you don't have the power in your career, I implore you to start looking for ways to establish that authority and reclaiming the power. And to help you do that, I do have some resources and they come in the form of some training courses. And the first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel. Resume Rocket Fuel is gonna teach you how to write a resume that's recruiter approved and is going to give you the best chance of getting noticed so that you can get more job opportunities so you don't have to tolerate less than ideal circumstances. Because once your resume starts to get results, then you have options and you have a position of power. And the purpose of that resume is to get you that first round interview. And then once you get that first round interview, it's up to you to market yourself correctly to get through each stage of the interviewing process to ultimately land at that great offer. And that's where the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp comes in. And I'm gonna walk you through each one of those steps. It starts actually job search and goes all the way to the offer process. And then I teach you how to negotiate the best possible offer for yourself so that you can make sure that you're not leaving a dime on the table. But if you wanna learn how to leverage networking by building your personal brand, you definitely wanna check out the Unlocking LinkedIn course because that's gonna teach you how to actually establish yourself as an authority in your space and be able to get those recruiters to start noticing you and more importantly, skip to the front of the line. Because then when you see that job posting that says they've got 700 candidates already, you can shrug your shoulders, wave at them as you cut all the way to the front of the line. So check that course out if you're ready to truly unlock your career potential. So I've shared a lot of things that I don't regret doing. What about you? What's that one thing that you don't regret doing in your career? Leave a comment below. Like always, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.